Yeah. Okay. All right. Welcome to Witch Police Radio. Uh, I'm here with someone who has been a frequent guest on the show, but not for a while. I think the last time um, when you were sort of making regular appearances would have been sort of in the, the late 2010s. And now we're into almost 2024 and uh, you've been doing some interesting stuff. So I think that the best way to start this off is if you want to introduce yourself and just give a bit of background about who you are and what you do. Uh, hey, yeah, I'm Keith. I'm a jazz guitar player from Winnipeg. I've been living in um, Auckland, New Zealand. Tamaki Makoto, um, Aotearoa for the last five years. I'm a senior lecturer at the uh, University of Auckland uh, and the coordinator of the jazz program down there. Very cool. So when, when did you actually leave? Like, when did you actually move? How long have you been in Auckland now? It's been almost five years. It was end of January 2019 that I moved down for that gig. So what is... I mean, that's, that's the, it's literally the other side of the world, right? So what is it, what mm -hmm. is it like down there? Especially as a musician, you know... Um, coming into a completely new context like that. I mean, I know you you obviously, you have a job there and you're, all of those things are, are obviously part of it, but just kind of, there's gotta be a culture shock, right? Coming from uh, Winnipeg to, to suddenly being in somewhere that's radically different, I, I assume. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, in some ways it's, like, it's, 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 like, it's like such an opposite from Winnipeg. Like, um, you know, it's an island. Yeah. Um, Auckland is on a narrow strip of land. The most narrow part is five kilometers between the Pacific Ocean and the Tasman Sea. Lots of people do surfing. It's subtropical. You know, all the, you know, it's summer there right now. All the dates are, you know, like you have to reorientate uh, the calendar. Yeah, of people course. People are laid back there. But it's also, I think there's like a really strong British influence still. So sometimes it's like really chill island fives and then sometimes it's really kind of a brutal <laughs> british approach okay. so that maybe is like i feel like canadians are it's a bit more down the center you kind of know where things are going to be and yeah i get surprised there a lot and i think the longer i've living i've been living there the more subtleties and cultural differences uh, i've been noticing but uh i've been loving it down there and of course moving there to have a job in the music scene you know i met everybody right away or not everybody but i met lots of people and i felt welcome so i had a really smooth transition i would say and uh, that's good. In, into the scene and into the community yeah that's got to help obviously right is just having that that in sort of from day one exactly you know going to gigs and getting some gigs and uh you know one of my colleagues books the jazz club so it wasn't long before i got to play there so yeah it's very different than if you're just moving to a new city and trying to start out it would take years to get established where yeah. it took me less time i think yeah, very lucky. What is the jazz scene like down there? Is 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 it a big? Uh, is there a big community? It's good. Yeah, it's a, it's a great scene. Um, they've had a jazz program for about twenty years, just like uh, Winnipeg has had. And um, so the grads uh, of the program have gone, and they started teaching at the high schools and stuff like that. And then they're oh, yeah. sending their students, you know, at higher and higher levels. So like the the um, the talent that's coming in is is off the charts. Uh, you know, it's just it's really wonderful to see and it's really open-minded like we have folks who are interested in um traditional type of jazz but there's also like there's a, some really good free free jazz avant-garde musicians who have weekly things i feel like there's more fusion opportunities i feel like the last 40 years of jazz is still is really well represented there so i feel like it's more eclectic than what i was used to and i feel like i fit in really well uh, with that's it. cool that's, that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. It, has this? I mean, obviously, like you said, you you've been able to to play shows. I've seen video of you performing down there and everything. Mm. How has this this move and this kind of being thrust into this new environment, which isn't that new for you anymore, I guess? But how has that affected your writing and your playing? Uh, just just being in a completely uh, out of your com comfort zone, I guess, and into this new scenario. Is that has mm. it had a noticeable impact on on the way you compose and the way you the way you play? Yeah, man. I feel like I mean, you, things are always changing for for any anyone who's working on what they're doing. Uh, I mean, maybe it'll be more obvious now that I'm coming back, and maybe if I have some friends who haven't heard me play in a while, they might be able to notice differences because I'm doing it gradually. But um, yeah, I mean, like one thing is like having the steady teaching job, which I love, allows me to focus in whatever I'm putting out is kind of really what I want to be putting out. And I don't, I, I mean, I love playing all kinds of gigs, but I don't get all those calls. I don't have to have those calls. So I feel like having um, a steady, you know, academic income lets me just focus on the artistry that I want. And so 
I think that, yeah, I don't know. Things, that, th things are getting mellower for me, um, less frantic. I feel like more in control and less like um, caught up in the moment in a good way. I just got a new guitar, which is really changing the sound. It just was, you know, um, I kind of have something now that's kind of a, uh, a hybrid, a combination of the things I used to have in different instruments. And um, okay. I feel like that's evolving really quickly in, in a nice way. But uh, yeah, I think I have less pressure. Um, not that I had a lot of pressure before, but it's kind of like, you know, we're out in New Zealand, like we're connected uh, with the rest of the world, but it's also like, and you know, one of the nice things we have a jazz club is called Creative Jazz Club New Zealand, and they don't let you play standards um, oh, cool. unless you've done something really strange to them. We love standards. The guy who runs it loves standards and he knows all that stuff. But the point is you have to present new music. Yeah. So it forces everybody there to be writing and it's kind of like, kind of anything goes in a way. So yeah, I feel, feel like I'm, I don't know. I feel like I'm becoming more like myself, I guess, if that makes any sense. It does. Yeah. Having, having that kind of a, uh, the, the, the main gig being the job in the background and, and then that's, so you don't have to worry about like, you know, where your next check's coming from or where, you know, taking shows you don't necessarily want to do because you need, you need to do it to, to keep, keep the musician thing going. Right. Yeah, yeah, or you know, you know, there's lots of gigs I'd love to do, but I might not have been the right fit for them, you know, and so I don't end up on those kind of things uh, anymore. Yeah. And it's it's just it's just more focused, I think, in a nice way. Yeah, that's cool. That's good to hear. Um, so you're you're back in Winnipeg now. At the time we're talking, um, yes. What, 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 is this is obviously just a temporary thing, I'm assuming, or are you coming back? Like, how long are you in town for? Oh, I'm here till like uh, early January. Okay, so yeah, just it's just coming back to a visit family and everything. Yeah, yeah. But you have I a show. I try to come back like, oh, yeah, but luckily, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's like um, my plan was to come back like twice a year and then COVID happened. And of I course. was, uh, I couldn't travel for two and a half years. You know, I don't know if you guys heard New Zealand had a very strict policy. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't have the right type of visa to re-enter. So if I had left, I would have probably lost my job. So now I'm just kind of getting into the normalcy. And so the first few trips back after COVID was just mostly family orientated. And now it's kind of like, okay, well, we can catch our breath now. So it's like ahead of the trip, it's like, hey, Amber, I'm coming back. You want to do a gig? <laughs> so um, yeah, really lucky. We're playing uh, January 7th, a Sunday as part of that um, Jazz Winnipeg series. Uh, this is at the Fort Gary Hotel, which I haven't attended or, or, or whatever yet. Looking forward to it. But uh Amber and I, back in the day, did lots of um, Joni Mitchell arrangements and Canadiana arrangements. So we're going to oh, cool. uh, dust off some of those ones. And then we're doing new arrangements of some New Zealand music, uh, New, New Zealand artists anyways. Um, so it's going to be really fun. Like, I haven't played a gig in Winnipeg in five years. And, um, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, I don't know what to expect. Like, I'm sure it'll feel old, but also, like, in a comfortable way, but also, yeah. like, really new. Because, like we've all been changing in the last five years who knows what yeah and there's new people coming in and, and yeah people are changing their styles and they're yeah for sure um you mentioned mm. the covid thing and i mean like that's obviously something that's affected everyone across the board um you know for years but that's a, that's a big chunk of your time in new zealand has been sort of under those restrictions and that and dealing with that kind of mm. whole situation so how has that been as far as um being able to do your job and being able to uh, not only teach, but, but just play music. I mean, I'm assuming that there weren't any shows the same way they weren't any here uh, for quite some time. Well, yeah, I had about a year run before uh, COVID started. Okay. And then uh, New Zealand would do really strict lockdowns and then we would eliminate the disease and then everything would open up again. And then it would shut down, I think. And because Auckland was where most of the quarantine hotels were, that's where the outbreaks would continue to happen. So right. Actually, after the first two months, the rest of New Zealand didn't have COVID for the whole pandemic. They had done such a great job, um, depending on who you ask. Of course. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it was kind of like uh, the, co the lockdown would happen and we'd have to reinvent how to teach jazz on Zoom, which we did, but it wasn't easy. So it was kind of like yeah. treading water. Then things would open up again and I'd try to remember how to play. And um, I don't know. I felt like I was kind of uh, just surviving as many other people were for maybe those three years because you'd get out and play and you'd kind of get back to where you felt like you were sharp and then another lockdown would happen and it would all be boom, gone for a couple of months. So it's weird. It feels like I've only been gone from Winnipeg for a couple of years. As everyone, we kind of almost have this like gap. 
Yeah, yeah. It's like um, everyone's a couple years and, younger than they they actually are because you missed yeah, out. The time. Yeah, exactly, yeah, totally. exactly. And I don't know that the music was developing then for most of us either. Um, you know, but like now it now is now is a happy time. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were you I, one of the things that I've noticed, kind of interviewing people uh, who have all gone through that, and, and it's affected them in various ways. But people seem to have gone either one way or the other, where they they found the time during the pandemic to be super creative and, and they've been just like writing and, and recording what they can. I know that people have been completely blocked and not been able to do anything and just sort of taking that time off from playing music. Obviously you yeah. couldn't do that because of your job, but did you find it to be a very, um, you know, a good time for, for writing because you had maybe extra time to uh, just sit <laughs> no. at home with the guitar or the opposite? No, no, I, I was totally blocked. Yeah. I was like, I felt pretty nervous and anxious about the whole damn situation and all my energy went into just um, keeping the level of teaching and engagement up for the students. You know, teaching on Zoom, it takes twice the amount of energy. So I believe it, it was like, just get through each day. And um, I probably went a year or two without writing one piece of music, you know. And that's fine. Like, um, we're also, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't want to be flippant about it because it was a hard time for a lot of us. But in a general sense, it's like, Having some kind of a high, um, uh, hibernation time once in a while is kind of a good thing, you know? So yeah. maybe things are coming out. For those of us who are blocked, maybe things are coming out better now. I feel like things are coming easier now. So it was kind of like um, things have been waiting <laughs> to, to come out now or whatever. So yeah, it wasn't a great time, but whatever. We survived, we got through. Now feels like a really um, inspired time uh, for my, for, you know, for myself, anyways. So that's cool. Post COVID, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you um, are you working on any recordings or anything while you're out there? Uh, yeah, you know, I just released a single um on December eighth, uh, and I've got an album coming out with that same group in the new year. So the group is called Lack Lou. It's just like okay. a name uh, that I've always wanted to use for something, and it's um. I'm performing with two students, uh, recent grads, um, saxophone and drums trio and with guitar. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, I'm working. Um, so uh, like part of my job is uh, to do research or and um, and I'm working on a PhD. And so my PhD research is like looking at the recording process of the album Bitches Brew by Miles oh, Davis. Yeah. And so, you know, they brought in unfinished music. They improvised without really knowing what was happening, although Miles probably knew. And then they edited it later. It's like um, what people do now with uh, cutting and pasting dance music and, and, and yeah. whatever else. Um, just, just way, way ahead of his time. It was way ahead of his time, yeah. Um, so I'm working on that kind of, uh, just kind of documenting that approach and seeing how it affects the, the creative process. And so that's what I did for this recording where we went in and we didn't even do full takes uh, of most of the tunes and just kind of did sections. And then I cut things around and um, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, and so, yeah, the, the the full album will come out. Well, I guess it's kind of like an EP. It's going to come out in the new year. We don't have a release date yet, but it'll be the first half of um, 2024 on Rattle Records, which is a great label in New Zealand that has a lot of cool um, jazz and classical uh, type music. Have you been uh, but the, exposed? But, uh, but, oh, sorry, uh, but the, I should say, Sam, that the single is called Winter Fog Morning, and it's out on streaming everywhere right now. All the, and the, and the group places. is called Lack Lou. Lack yes. Lou. Sounds good. Lack um, Lou. Yep. Lack Lou. How do you spell that? I mean, Lack, L-A-L. L-A-C-L-U. Okay, Lack Lou. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> like the lake. It's in Ontario. It's, it's There's a Lack like, Lou. In, okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Have, you, uh, have you been exposed to... Um, I mean, maybe jazz aside, but have you been exposed to different stuff uh, musically just, just being out there? Uh, just maybe stuff that you never would have encountered uh, in North America? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like we're way down in the South Pacific, but it's kind of, and I don't know much about it, but to, uh, to explain it, but it's like there's something about Pacific culture. So all of the cities that are on the, on the Pacific Ocean are kind of connected in some ways. So we get lots of stuff from, from, from Asia and I have students who are from Asia. So, you know, I have, might have a student come in and talk about uh, a genre I never heard of called city pop. And it's like an 80s smooth jazz funk from Japan. Oh, weird. And it's got a certain kind of style. And so, and then you hear that in some of the artists, um, uh, you know, Mark DeClive Lowe is in LA, but he's um, a Kiwi artist and his jazz is mixed with his um, 
Japanese heritage and hip hop and things like that. I feel like I'm getting more and more into ambient music. Um, Susumu Yokota is someone that I really like. There's this other band, I think it's like 2814. Their name is just like a year or a number. Okay. Um, yeah, that stuff kind of comes up. And then New Zealand has a really big affinity with reggae. So like the Maori, um, like the indigenous folks there, they're, they kind of have like um, a renaissance in the 70s. And that's the time when Bob Marley came to visit New Zealand. And like they really identify with the politics and the, and the music. So it's like kind of becoming a, like a very strong New Zealand type of genre is reggae. Um, but it's their own twist on it, right? It's, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I wouldn't be the one to really explain or speak on it or whatever, but uh, yeah, you. I mean, yeah, there's lots of different uh, reggae artists that's coming up. I don't know if it's changed my music, but um, and, you know, it's like, um, excuse me, some things I notice um, <clears throat> when I hear country music once in a while, I think, boy, I never hear that much in New Zealand. Or if I hear rock, like hard rock, like, oh yeah, these things that I'd hear a lot in Winnipeg or in Canada aren't there as strongly. But like dance music, uh, reggae music, uh, ambient type of stuff, free jazz, these things are stronger there. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if it's how it's affected me, but it def definitely feels like the landscape there is quite different, musically speaking, for sure. Well, that stuff's gonna be floating around in the background too. I'm sure you absorb some of it subconsciously Probably. Just, just from being yeah, around it. must it. be, must be. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It's a different culture, for sure. Do you feel you have become, um, over the time you've been there, like, Kiwiified? Like, are you are you uh, losing your Canadianness and then becoming more of a New Zealander, or is it, do you still feel very strongly that you're from here? Like, does that is that part of you still uh, very present in sort of your day to day? Oh well, I mean, I can't escape it. Anytime I walk into a shop, you know, I have an accent. Yeah, yeah, of um, course, yeah. And I have a certain way of looking at things. Like, if something's supposed to start at seven, I'm there for seven, and that might not be the case with all all Kiwis. Um, I think it's slowly working on me. I bet that my students think that I'm kind of a hard ass Canadian, like here's how you do things, you know, compared to them. But um, yeah, I, th I think it's I think it's working on me little bit by little bit. Um, but uh, I'm starting to identify maybe more as a New Zealander now a little bit. I'm not a citizen. I'm a permanent resident, you know, right. and, but I'm only five years in I'm learning more and more about the history. But yeah, I'm probably caught in between the two uh, at the moment. That's for sure. Just a matter of time before the accent starts changing and you start getting a little bit of that uh, accent melding with the Canadian thing. I think I I think I have it sometimes, but then it clears right up when I come back. Of course, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So I know you mentioned the the Lack Lou single, um, which just just came out, and you have that that music coming up. Um, if people want to hear your other stuff, I mean, I know you have a lot of records out um, that have come out, you know, while you were here and and over the years. What's the best way for uh, people to find your music and, and find out what you're up to? You know, everything's on Bandcamp. Uh, some of my streaming albums are under one name or another name, like one of them's Keith Price Trio, another one's Keith Price Quartet or whatever. But just everything's on Bandcamp. All all the albums are, are there pretty much. So that's probably the easiest way. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, the fact that you're in New Zealand means you're probably not playing a lot of shows locally that the majority of the listeners to the show would uh, be able to go check out. But the good thing about the single <laughs> podcast, you know, someone could hear it now the day it gets released or they could hear it two years from now and by then who knows when you're back in Winnipeg things like that so what's the best way to sort of mm. follow you and, and see what you're up to as far as uh shows and, and album releases and, th and things like that uh yeah keithprice.ca it's still going yeah, yeah it's still going although I mean if you look at it, the day this is well the day is this is being recorded I need to update stuff on there <laughs> so I'll, maybe I'll say that I have to get it updated for uh for when this podcast airs but that's well, now easy. you have to because you've said it it's been recorded now so yeah it has to happen. Yeah. yeah yeah that's on my to-do list like first thing in january is like get the website looking better <laughs> and have all the events on there and all that kind of stuff yeah right on well, well speaking of events do you want to just plug that show that's happening um coming up very soon in winnipeg absolutely yeah so it's um i forget what they call their series now i've been you know i'm a foreigner so forgive me of but course it's, yeah, uh, yeah yeah it's the sunday series that the uh the jazz winnipeg puts on at the Fort Gary. It's the club in the basement there or the lower yeah. level, which is supposed to be awesome. And it's, yeah, it's January 7th. I should know that if I was a, if I was not a rookie, <laughs> I would have looked up the time, start time before I got on this podcast, but it's, uh, it's 
probably in the evening. Well, I'll, and, uh, uh, I'll, link, to, I'll link to the event too on the, on the show <laughs> notes so people can though. find Thank it. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's with Amber Epp, um, a, a longtime friend and a musical collaborator. Julian Bradford is on bass, uh, my old one of my oldest friends, basically. Cool. And uh, Danielle Waugh on drums. And we'll be doing a mix of Canadiana jazz um, arrangements and some uh, music by Kiwi artists as well. And how long have you had to prepare for this? I mean, have you been sort of uh, working with, with these musicians since you got back in town? Uh, no, <laughs> no everyone, nope. I mean, I just got back on the 23rd and everyone's right, doing, right. you know, Christmas holiday, and so. stuff. And yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, um, we've got some rehearsals planned in January and uh, Amber and I've been, you know, coordinating some of the new music already, uh, just over, uh, email or whatever. Cool. But it's, you know, it'll just be like the old shoe fits. Like we've all played together so much. It'll be, um, that's what I'm really looking forward to is it'll be, we have that familiarity, strong connection for many years, but it'll be fresh because we, we haven't done it in five years. So it'll be really cool. Yeah, it's probably probably uh, cool to see that muscle memory kind of kick back in, um, having, you know, had that time off between yeah. playing together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can't, um, that's something you can't make happen. It just has to be there. So that's, we're very lucky. This is going to be happening on the 7th. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you're back in town and, um, you know, I'm sure to be that here. it's the warmest winter ever. Right? Uh, yeah, 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 it is. You, you picked it. You picked a good time to come back for sure. Definitely Pretty lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome.